because from this moment, from these female actions, uh, it was a start of the whole big street peaceful uh, protest that uh, uh, continued. Uh, mm-hmm. They still uh, continue, by the way, but in another ways. Uh, but um, the main thing, uh, I believe, that uh, exactly women and female uh, actions of solidarity uh, created a different signs of, of this protest as a whole. First of all, this uh, peaceful uh, message of it, uh, as all the world uh, knew uh, about this, it's already like a brand of Belarusian protest, that we continue to be very peaceful despite of all, of all this uh, uh, violent reaction uh, on what we, we've been doing uh, from the um, authority. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember also uh, different uh, interesting moments. Uh, for instance, uh, once uh, mm-hmm. when we've um, um, when we've been moving um, to, uh, on the road, and then uh, it was you know like um, um, one part of us was a bit uh, slow, and uh, we just. Um, um, uh, I don't remember who exactly, but it was like one uh, girl, uh, one woman uh, just uh, said, okay, we need to stop and wait for, for those uh, part of our column who uh, was a bit slower and uh, appeared on the, uh, another part of the road. And it was from the female uh, actions and it, it continued to be also on uh, this uh, uh, Sunday protest that we had afterwards. Uh, and it was a big, big uh, sign and uh, uh, big moment of solidarity during all these uh, women actions. Um, and I remember that uh, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was like you know that the, we, we did, didn't know who is the leader among mm-hmm. us, but we f- we felt that all of us we are like leaders, and uh, that we can organize different actions of solidarity. That's why it mm-hmm. um, was not only uh, like the big one on this market, mm-hmm. but also uh, there were many of them. Uh, every day uh, in every uh, in district of Minsk and other cities. Uh, we, I remember that we just uh, were standing, um, maybe like five or ten of us in, in different parts of the city. And also it was a very lovely moment uh, when once um, uh, one man came to us and asked, um, uh, he said, uh, dear, dear women, uh, I, I brought a coffee and sandwiches for you. And you're very brave and you're standing for our freedom, mm-hmm. democracy. And I can see this. And that's why I will be like uh, a servant for you uh, this day. Um, that's why mm-hmm. I really believe uh since I was inside this uh, movement and uh, during all this protest and also um, uh, in uh, this uh, Sunday, um, uh, no, Saturday uh, female actions that we had also, uh, that women uh, were in front of uh, all this protest. The true, they played a great role during uh, not only female actions, but during the uh, Sundays, marches, mm-hmm. and uh, in every process of this. Uh, and they continue to be and make a, a big uh, impact on everything that is happening right now and continue to be like our protest in Belarus and outside uh, Belarus in the countries where we, many of us, unfortunately, uh, forcibly uh, had to move. Yes. Um... 
Thank you, Yulia. But uh, you know what, what I was thinking while you were talking? Uh, we presented you as a feminist. Is it uh, accepted in Belarus? Is it um, in the oppositional movement? How, how, how do you, uh, pr in, your, in your movement, in your political activism, how are you perceived? by other leaders in the protest movement. Is feminism something that is uh, recognized, strong going in Belarus, or is it not? Mm, that's a very good question, uh, because uh, in one way, of course, in one hand, mm -hmm. um, uh, many people, many men, first of all, who confirm uh, that the women and uh, feminists, uh, they uh, made a great role during this protest. Uh, but um, the problem is uh, what we can see right now. Um, um, for instance, uh, if you can uh, watch different independent media in, in Belarus, uh, uh, who are like pro-democratic, what I mean. Um, we, I would say, returned to the position that we had before the protest, before when we can see all these women in front of the protest. Uh, now we uh, again have uh, like uh, many experts, uh, who are, I mean, who are men, uh, who uh, um, explain and uh, who invited by the journalist to to be like an expert. That's that mean that we uh, don't have so many uh, women who appeared like uh, to uh, analyze or reflect on different uh, uh, questions, not only about women rights. Uh, feminism uh, is not a um, Mm, is not like a part of human rights uh, movement for uh, many political leaders still. Mm -hmm. Many of them don't understand this, uh, not only uh, men, but also uh, women. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's quite sometimes quite hard to explain why we are like uh, mm -hmm. Uh, members of the feminist group within the Coordination Council uh, devoted many uh, much time to this question. I mean, gender equality, women rights, etc. I, I remember, like um, some time ago, one uh, quite famous uh, expert from the political opposition told me uh, that. Um, you know, Yulia, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, women, um, they did a really good uh, job for the protest. Yes, they've been in front of this, uh, they, they were all um, like uh, visual, especially because of the nice picture of the dresses, uh, color of the dresses, etc. Uh, but he said, uh, I guess we have been uh, tired to talk about this great role of women during this protest because men uh, did uh, uh, this big role as well. And I said, yes, that's true. Uh, and nobody um, denied this. Uh, but uh, women uh, need to get more support mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, according to the um, research that we had uh, within the feminist group uh, among uh, different Belarusian women who have been involved in this protest, mm -hmm. um, very often they don't uh, feel that they did something very uh, important. Uh, and even now, when they continue and trying to continue to do something, very small uh, things like uh, uh, be on the street with these flowers and these uh, national uh, colors, so uh, dresses and uh, holding flags, for instance, or umbrellas or something like that, or, or something uh, not so maybe big, uh, they um, 
I talked uh, to um, some women who are like um, activists in their courtyards mm -hmm. and they told me that uh, the men uh, who uh, they talked to, they told them, uh, you know, everything that you are doing, it's not so important. It's uh, nothing uh, to do struggling with this um, uh, real dictatorship regime. Uh, that's why we don't want to join you with this, uh, because it's not like a big protest or something like that. But for these women, it's really very important to continue uh, to do uh, even very small things, because this is their impact to the victory, and they really believe in this. But uh, And also uh, many women who continue to be volunteers in different uh, spheres, uh, packing uh, um, uh, different stuff for political prisoners, so, uh, writing them uh, letters, uh, letters to them, and so on, so on. But it is this is very invisible uh, work that they are doing, but very important, by the way. And if we are looking to the uh, different spheres and to different uh, part of the protest uh, in every of each, I mean, in a cultural, in a sport, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, among teachers, among um, artists, uh, among uh, many of them, we have also among Belarusian diaspora, by the way, in different countries, most of them, they are women. But when we are going to say again about feminism and gender equality, it's still not like a priority, unfortunately, uh, for our political uh, opposition. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I hope that this situation will be changing. Exactly. Uh, I would like to remind to our listeners, uh, we are talking about uh, women in the Belarusian protest movement with Yulia Mitskevich, feminist political activist. But uh, you, Yulia, you also work with a Swedish uh, concept of continued education, uh, as, as known here as like ABF uh, movement. Uh, and you have actually said something here in the beginning that uh, when uh, uh, you, uh, you've been marching in this uh, big uh, peaceful marches uh, last year, uh, there was a feeling that everyone is a leader. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you think this, uh, uh, that feeling and as uh, what you're describing now that um, uh, women taking um, small actions, maybe on their own, they, they really take upon themselves this responsibility to keep the protest going. Uh, is it somehow connected to what the civil society been working with for this uh, last 20 years? with continued education, with a, a lot of uh, maybe courses and seminars about gender equality, that it kind of helped to uh, bring this issue up, or it uh, just belongs to Belarusian culture anyways? <laughs> can, mm -hmm. one, uh, can, can we think a little bit about, in, in this kind of terms, what we do in like um, our maybe work, professional work with uh, this whole concept of democracy, and how like regular people working in the stores, working, as you said, at schools, uh, have taken upon themselves this responsibility to keep uh, uh, saying no for their stolen votes. Oh, that's a very good point, Lan. Thank you that you uh, noticed this, because uh, I remember when uh, all this uh, protest and all this action started, we uh, have been laughing with uh, my colleagues from the civil society organization that uh, uh, during many years when we um, organize and make different educational and human rights activities, uh, uh, we couldn't uh, see uh, a real result of this. Uh, and uh, we tried to do a, a lot of things, but it wasn't so maybe succeed as we uh, thought about this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, during this uh, August event, uh, uh, we have realized that mm -hmm. everything that we did uh, uh, now, we 
got your result. Now we can mm -hmm. see this uh, result uh, because yes, I really believe that it's also because of uh, our uh, activities during uh, more than 20 years. I, I mean, um, many uh, civil society organizations that, uh, and in cooperation uh, with uh, um, our partners in different countries. For me, it's first of all, of course, uh, Sweden and Sweden, the Swedish colleagues from the organization ABF. Mm -hmm. And yes, I remember, and even uh, once I um, mentioned uh, this point um, in one interview, that uh, um, all this, what uh, was happening in Belarus during this protest uh, that I could observe, remind me uh, that Belarus became like a, a big uh, Swedish circle. The message that we uh, provide to the uh, society, because uh, the principle of Swedish circle, as we call it uh, in, in Belarus, Swedish circle, uh, it's uh, when um, a small group of people, maybe eight or ten people. Uh, organize education for themselves, just uh, taking this responsibility mm -hmm. to do this and feeling like they are leaders mm -hmm. uh, for doing this. Uh, and uh, this is really what uh, happened in, in Belarus and continue to happen. That's why, to me, very important to continue uh, make um, um, our um, activity and uh, providing democracy via education for Belarusian people, because I strongly believe that there is no uh, democracy without education and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, uh, by the way, uh, despite I had moved uh, to uh, Lithuania after mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, imprisoned and then released, um, here in Lithuania, we continue to make uh, our education for Belarusian people who live uh, uh, here also possibly. Uh, and uh, that was a big moment and a big proud to me personally that last Friday, Friday we had like a grand opening of our uh, organization ABF Belarus, but here in Lithuania. And of course, we mm -hmm. continue to do uh, our uh, activities mm -hmm. um, because uh, despite uh, and where we live, uh, it's uh, not for uh, forever. Uh, yeah, we really hope so. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. And uh, uh, if we are in Lithuania, Poland, Ukraine, Georgia right now, uh, it's anyway very important to us uh, building up and developing our civil society, because we really believe that it's a Belarusian civil society, mm -hmm. uh, that we can uh, and we will uh, continue to develop after we come back to our country. Yes. but. And we, we have um, got a little uh, question here from uh, one of our uh, listeners, and it's um, it is a very good question that usually comes up in uh, in the dialogue. How how can we assist you in very concrete way? And I was thinking with this um, uh, study circles or Swedish circles, as you call them, do you actually have contact with maybe other study circles in Sweden where people can actually join and have this uh, person to person contact? Uh, do, um, do you have this kind of activities also digitally, of course? Uh, you know, in um, in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, I uh, to, 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 in cooperation with the organization ABF, yes, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh It's um, they are our partners. Uh, we uh, organize uh, um, this kind of digital. Uh, study circles for Swedish people where I, um, uh, where we uh, making some different discussions about situation in Belarus and how, for instance, 
Swedish people can assist with uh, uh, with this, uh, and uh, and m m it's a good idea. Maybe we can continue this uh, autumn to do something like that. If uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm, Swedes. Uh, have this interest to, to join. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, with your organization, Lana Ostergruppen, mm -hmm. um, no problem for me. It's yes. I I use all the time any chance to mm -hmm. spread the information about mm -hmm. uh, situation within Belarus and uh, uh, to make uh, as many contacts and as possible between Belarusian um, people and Swedish uh, people. It would mm -hmm. be very good. Anna, but great, and uh, uh, we can take forever, but uh, this is just a half hour we've uh, got here at the uh, uh, global authority, as it is called. And I thank you very much, Julia. And uh, for our listeners, we're actually going to continue this conversation tomorrow uh, with a little bit more broader focus on the, uh, on the future. As we said, we really hope the situation in Belarus, as we see it today, is not forever. But uh, what's going on now? Because we don't see so much in our, uh, in, in our news anymore. So uh, tomorrow we will focus a little bit on the situation, what's going on today. So thank you so very much, uh, Julia. And I wish you to continue a good day and really looking forward uh, to talk to you tomorrow. Uh, is there some other uh, kind of a, a, a final word you would like to send uh, from this perspective of uh, women, the feminism, gender equality perspective? Uh, I, first of all, I would like to say thank you so much for your invitation. It's uh, all the time very good uh, to me to have this possibility to to say about uh, strong, brave and independent women in Belarus and their struggle. Uh, and yes, uh, tomorrow we will continue anyway and uh, be in touch and see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. And now some words uh, for the finishing up in Swedish again. Uh, eftersom det är ändå um, uh, Göteborgs uh, uh, evenemang som Östgruppen brukade vara på i Göteborg, men nu sänder vi digitalt. Men jag tänker ändå, det är ju böcker som är i fokus, eller hur? Så förra året så har det ju kommit ut väldigt många fantastiska böcker på svenska som beskriver situationen i Belarus. Här till exempel en antologin från Atlas förlag. Här har jag också Ariels förlags flera olika broschyrer som han tar upp olika aspekter av den här revolutionen genom konst, genom brev och essä. Men det finns också fantastisk poesi som är utgiven på svenska. Uh, från uh, olika författare. Så för de som vill veta lite mer, förstå lite djupare, vad händer i Belarus? B vad gör att folk är engagerade? Hur upplever de det? Så varsågod, det finns uh, mycket fantastisk litteratur som är tillgängligt. Uh, ni kan också, uh, ni som vill engagera er och uh, ge er bidrag, som vi pratade idag med Julia. Uh, det finns organisationer som kan ge tillgång till uh, folket i Belarus, med, till kvinnor, till aktivister, uh, till civilsamhälle. Så det finns uh, möjligheter att komma i kontakt, ha samtal, ge, uh, liksom sit, uh, solid liksom visa sitt solidaritet med det som händer. Och ni kan också alltid komma på Östgruppens hemsida och följa våra kampanjer, stödja dem. Ni kan alltid skriva brev till uh, politiska fångar. Och vi har...